PhotoLab 7 is a fully featured image cataloging and editing application designed for beginner and advanced photographers. It works in a non-destructive way, so you don't have to worry about destroying your images or your original files when you are making adjustments to your files. It offers a level of customization to ensure you only have the tools you need for your editing sessions. It also supports pretty much all of the standard file types and support for recent raw file formats from the latest cameras. So you're always getting updates there. DxO is doing a great job at keeping those up to date. Now you'll want to have an internet connection and download some of the updates to the raw file support in the DxO optics modules. Now in this video, I'm not going to go crazy deep into the DxO optic modules. But just know that these are creative combination uh, optical corrections based off of your camera and your lens combination. And they have a lot of them and they're always creating the new ones. So as new cameras and new lens come out into the market, new versions are or new optical modules are being released. So, you know you'll always have an opportunity to uh, get the best optical correction for your camera. Uh, and you don't have to download all of them. You just download the ones that you have a camera lens combination for. And I'll show you what that looks like here in a little bit. Here we are inside of photo lab and we're just going to go over some very basic things. So depending on if you just downloaded your software, um, or if you've had it for a little while, the first thing that I recommend you do is change your preferences. So you can do this by coming up to DxO Photo Lab, and obviously on a PC, you're gonna have to probably click on File and then click on Settings. Once you make it to the Settings dialog box on the General tab, you're gonna see where it says Auto Apply Presets for Raw Images. Uh, and then also for RGB images. Now, I'm not gonna go into crazy detail about this. You essentially have three options that I would recommend you consider. The first one is DxO Style Natural. This is just going to be a very natural, basic correction. Uh, then you'll have DxO Standard, and this is going to be the standard correction that DxO will apply uh, then you also have DxO optical corrections only. Now, if you are very particular about your color, then DxO optical correction is probably going to be the option you want to choose. And then of course you have no correction at all. And this just means when you load a raw file, DxO is not going to add anything extra to your images. It's only going to import them or really just read them off the hard drive. That's one of the benefits of using DxO uh, Photo Lab 7. But for my personal use, I like the DxO style natural. Now, depending on where you are in your flow of setting up Photo Lab, you may have a photo that pops up that says uh, there's only those three options. And that's why I said there's really only three. But as you can see, you can actually apply different presets. So if you create a preset that you really, really enjoy, you can apply that to every photo when you open it up inside of Photo Lab. Lots of flexibility. I just personally like the DxO style natural because that allows me to really uh, dial in what I wanna do. Now for RGB images, you can do the exact same thing. I do recommend that you leave both of these set to the exact same style uh, because if you find that you are working with raw and RGB images in the same folder, you're going to have different looking images and you're going to think something's wrong with your computer, but it's really just these settings. So my recommendation, keep both of these to the exact same setting that way. When you're working in your files, you're not confusing yourself. That's all that we're going to focus on inside of this particular folder, or I'm sorry, settings uh, right now.
So now that we have our settings adjusted properly, let's go ahead and talk about some of the navigation. In the upper left hand corner, you'll see these two big tabs, one photo library, the other one says customize. This is really your two main workspaces that you'll be switching between. With photo library being the workspace that you'll use to navigate to your photos. In order to do that, I have these three panes collapsed right now. Uh, but if I were to click on folders, you'll see my navigation pane opens up. And this is just how you would navigate to a folder on your hard drive. So as you can see right now, I'm on FWP photo inside of the personal work folder. And then I went down to macro and I am going to select on front yard tulips and this gets me into this workspace now what you can see on the screen is i have a series of photos that don't have the camera and lens combination optics module downloaded we are going to talk about that a little bit later but i don't want to cover that right now so here is my that's the main thing that you want to do with the photo library all right is navigate to the folder so then you get to browse your images here you also have projects but we're not going to cover that right now think of projects like albums as you can see i have a few projects that i've built but you don't have to work in projects if you don't want to the next portion over here is going to be your viewer portion this is where you absolutely just view your images all right there's a little circle up here at the top. If I drag down, you'll see that I get a preview of the image that I have selected. And I could pull this all the way down and get a full preview, or I could just pull this up to uh, the top here just a little bit. And I can just kind of click through each of these images to get a different preview. So maybe I wanna look at this one and this is essentially the same right of any other software you just get to resize the preview that you get now if you don't want a preview you can just pull that all the way up to the top and you don't have that preview and then over on the right pane you can see that we have some information histogram uh, data and obviously the exif data camera that i use to photograph this image with uh, as well as some of the lens information here and if i did keyword this particular image i could add them here but i don't have any keywords added to these images as of right now and that's basically it for the photo library and viewer pane and the last thing that i'll mention on this particular view is if you wanted to, you could select a range of images. So click one, hold shift and click the last one. You can see I have all of these images selected and I could export to the disk. Now this comes in handy if you are using presets. So let's say that when these photos came into photo lab, they rendered with a preset and I don't need to do any more editing to those images. I could just click select all of them, hit export, and I'm done. And you never have to go into editing. But if you are like me and you really like to modify your images and work with them your way, well, what you want to do is click on an image, click on customize. And that's going to bring you into the edit module or the customize module. And this is where you have pretty much free reign to modify your image and do what you need to do in a photo editor. As I mentioned before, there are the DxO optics modules available. Now, I like to start there with my images. So what I'm going to do is click on DxO modules and then download missing DxO optics module. And it's going to bring up this dialog box that we seen earlier. And it's so simple to download. All you have to do is click this button here and it is now downloaded. 
And what this does is it has made corrections based off of the camera and the lens that I am using. All right. Now, I usually just leave that alone and I recommend that you do that as well until you get more comfortable with the software because DxO does a great job at making their optic modules and they probably know way more than I do. So I just trust that they made the right correction for distortion and things of that sort. All right. Now. Let's talk about workspaces inside of the actual customized module here. If you come up to the top, you'll see that there's workspaces. Right now, I have the advanced option selected. If I click on DxO standard, then it's going to change this workspace over here to really just giving me the basic tools and DxO film pack, which is something that I have as an add-on you may or may not have that depending on if you purchased it but for the purposes of this tutorial i am not going to talk about the film pack however the basic tools are things that you would find in pretty much any editor and if you're new to photo editing my recommendation is to click on the basic tools or the dxo standard this just simplifies your workflow and you don't really have to worry about clicking on anything up here because if you want to you can change a lot of information about your file so i'm not going to worry about the white balance because i think that changing the white balance is a little bit more advanced but i may want to work on my exposure so this little gray slider if you click on it it'll turn blue and that just activates this particular module if I drag the exposure to the left, obviously it gets darker. And if I pull it to the right, it gets brighter. And then if I double click, it will reset. Now there's a few presets that are built in. So you can kind of select these. You do have to click each one and wait for it to render. But essentially all it's doing is pulling this slider to the left or the right. And I feel like I can do that myself. So I don't really use those. Uh, because I can do this on my own and I think that this is a good edit so far here um, and then with the selective tone it's already made some adjustments for me and that's something that you may or may not want I personally am okay with the uh, pre adjustments because DxO does a pretty good job at getting me a basic uh, exposure. So if I were to turn on the comparison viewer, which is located up here at the top, it is this little uh, square with a dotted line down the center. And what this allows me to do is look at a before and after of my image. If I drag this left and right, you can see on the left hand side, the image is much darker and uh, not as vibrant or full of color uh, and you can really see that in the difference between this leaf on the flower to this leaf over here and as I drag that over it gets a little bit more vibrant and I'll just split it right here uh, but it's darker and it's just not as appealing the shadows aren't opened up so DxO really does a good job with the presets of a lot of these images so now I don't really have to manipulate any of this if I were uh, looking to send this out and publish it to a social or share with a friend or family member I could just come down to export and I'm good to go however if you want to go a little bit further there are some tools in here like the active lighting and all kinds of other things uh, just know that there is a lot of variety in the basic tools. What I will touch on is the local adjustment tab. And I'm not going to make any local adjustments because these are very powerful. So I'm going to make a dedicated video just for local adjustments. But know that if I wanted to, I could uh, isolate just the flower using either the control points or one of the brushes, the auto brush or the basic brush. I could do that, 
right here in this software and it's good to go. But what I will do for today's tutorial is up at the top right, for everyone who just wants something really simple and straightforward, you can click on presets. And right now I am inside of one of the film pack presets. I want to show you something that would just be generic to the DXO um, software, Photolab 7. So we'll just click on portrait and landscape. And you can see I have a few options available to me here. This high key one seems pretty cool. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that and it's going to change the photo for me. So when I turn off all of these presets up here or these modules, windows, panes, whatever you want to call them, I can see all of the effects that are happening to this particular preset impacting my photo. And if I want to turn some of that off, then I could say, OK, I don't like the white balance. I could turn that off and it changed my white balance. Or maybe I don't like the color rendering, so I could turn that off and it's now changed my color rendering. I don't like what it's doing with the HSL, so forth and so on. OK, now I personally do like all of that. So I'm going to turn all of those items back on because I think that this is pretty good. Once I'm done with my file, what I want to do is export it now. The cool thing about DXO is you could do a few different options, all right? If you are familiar with the Nick collection, it is also owned by DXO, and I think that's what they are very well known for. Uh, I can export directly to the Nick collection by clicking on this little button down here, and I could choose whichever version or whichever program in the Nick collection that I want to send my file to. I'm not going to do that for this video in a future video. I will walk through that process. However, sometimes you just want to get a photo out and share it with the world. Well, if you click export, then that brings you to the export dialog. And at first glance, this could be a little intimidating, but let me tell you, it is actually very, very easy to use. Uh, you can click on the top option here and it's just standard output. That's what it's labeled on mine. And this is like a default that comes baked into photo lab seven. If you click on action, you have a few different file formats. Uh, JPEG is the most popular, but you can export to TIFF DNG with all corrections applied or a DNG with denoise and optical corrections only applied. You'll have to choose which one you want, but most people, they just want to export a JPEG and I, that's typically what I do. And then of course you hit export and that image goes down here into this little export bar. This shows you the progress, that little blue line. And when it's done, you can click on the arrow there. I can hit the magnifying glass and it is going to show me that file in my export folder. So now I have my file exported and ready to share on social media or wherever I want to share it. So that is the basics of using this program from getting to your photos all the way through exporting an edited photo. If you found value in this content, please smash that like button and share this with someone who you think would find value in the content. What I want to know down in the comment section is what is your favorite feature in this software that I covered in this video or just a feature in general that would have you excited on using this particular program. If you got any questions about it, leave it in the comment section below or you can email me at freewillphotos at gmail.com. That's also in the description box. So if you need that email, you can get it from there. So with that, until next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.